happy to see each and every one of you uh, on this Mother's Day and I have been asked to give my testimony. So I just want to say that our faith and prayers are based on God's word and his promises. I had a family of five children, two girls, two boys, and the last one was a girl. I actually followed my mother's example when she brought us up. She had devotions every day at 6 a.m. in the morning, so I did the same. I read the Bible book by book, one chapter a day, taught them how to memorize a scripture verse each day, and each as each one of them was ready to accept the Lord, they prayed the prayer of salvation and later went on to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All five of them uh, experienced salvation as well as the baptism of the Spirit. When we actually moved to Penang, my second son began to mix with the wrong company and totally backslid in his lifestyle and went away from God. After that, he went to the States for higher education, but he was not pursuing God by any means. Uh, there's a verse in the Bible, Acts 16, 31. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And through this verse, I realized God did not only want to save me, but my whole household, all my children. So I was praying for my children one by one, but especially for my second son to come back to the Lord. When I prayed, I didn't see him in my mind's eye um, because he looked terrible in his facial appearance and his dress. But when I prayed for him, I saw him daily under the cross of Jesus Christ and I claimed his salvation. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God and in brackets uh, on my notes, I put the rhema of God. You see, in English, the, that word, word, is just the same word in every situation. But in the Greek, there are two words. And the one is the logos. That is, everything in the Bible is the logos, the word of God. But when God takes one of those verses or a portion of scripture and speaks it personally into your heart, then that becomes a rhema of God. And that's what produces faith in us. When God speaks to us, tells us what he wants, what we're, we're to do, how we're to do it and so forth, that is called the rhema of God. And so I remember one day when I was reading Jeremiah 31, 17, it says, There is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. Immediately, it was as if that verse just jumped off the page and went straight into my heart. And I knew that that border was not a natural border. Now, uh, Doug was born in Singapore, and I knew that didn't mean one day he will come back to Singapore. Rather, uh, God was talking about the spiritual realm that one day Doug would come back to God because that was his real, once we accept the Lord, you know, the spiritual is the real uh, realm that we belong to. And in fact, I wrote that in my Bible 
by that very verse, I wrote, this is a promise for Doug, and it's still in my Bible. In fact, I had to go look it up uh, to find out where it was found, and there's where I saw I had written it, and it was still there. I prayed for him 20 years, every day, claiming that verse, thanking God for the promise that God had given me, that he would come back to his own border, which was a spiritual border. He would come back to God. Um, it wasn't easy. I remember one time when I received a telephone call from America. I was here in Singapore, and it was from my son Douglas. He was crying like a baby. Mama, Mama, help me. The police have surrounded the house I'm in, and they're going to catch me. And I remember saying, Doug, I, I can't help you. I'm 10,000 miles away away from you. Why don't you call on the name of Jesus? And his voice suddenly changed from a whimpering child to an angry man. Don't you ever mention that name to me again. And the phone was slammed down on the other side. I, to say that I was shocked is that's really the least because I, it, it just took me really by surprise. But then I realized he had demons inside of him and I refused to get discouraged and give up. I clung to the promise God had given me because you see the Bible says in Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth shall pass away. I mean, when you look around heaven and earth, seems so stable and so lasting, but the Bible says one day it will pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And he had told me he was going to bring my son back to his own border. He was going to bring my son back to himself. And, and I remember uh, in the beginning when I prayed, I would say, oh, God, don't let anything happen to him. Uh, protect him, protect him. But over the years, I changed my prayer as I realized I could not protect him. I had to let him go and give him totally to God. I prayed as my prayer changed, Lord, whatever you have to do to bring him back to you. I don't care what it is. Uh, if you want to remove parts of his body, that's up to you. I release him into your hands. I'm not going to ask you to protect him in the natural. I want his salvation, and that is the most important thing uh, in, in my life, is to see him come back to you. I was not the only one praying for him. All the members of our family were praying. Um, at the time that I'm, you know, uh, giving this testimony, I'm 93 years old. My husband has gone to be with the Lord. My old oldest son has already gone to be with the Lord. He went a year before my husband did, and. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things I can't remember, but I the three daughters are still here. And I went to each of those three daughters and I asked them uh, what, what they had done and so forth. So my eldest daughter cried out to God for her brother uh, over the years, this is while he was in a backslidden state, and two or three times it looked like her prayers were being answered. And then her brother would turn back to his own way. And she remembered as a young boy, he, he would go up to the altar, weep, cry, 
and then turn around and do some of the same things all over again. And so she was disappointed and she cried to God, Lord, is there any point to keep on uh, praying for him? He doesn't seem to be willing to make a stand. And God dropped this verse in her heart. That's Philippians chapter two, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. No, it was God saying, you don't worry about him not being willing. This is, I'm promised that I will do it. I'll not only bring him back to myself, I will work in him to will and to do of my good pleasure. And she fastened her faith on God's word and God's faithfulness that he promised this and he himself would do it. My youngest daughter and her husband, they had been in Japan for, I can't remember now how many years it was, but when they came home from Japan, of course, all the time in Japan, they had been praying for him. But then when they came back they to America, they visited him in prison. He, he was in prison. And there they witnessed to him, prayed for him, and were believing for him. Not just once, but several times. One day, on another part of the mission field, God spoke to my second daughter and said, your brother will be in hell within two weeks. Now go to America and I, quote unquote, God will save him. I'm the one that put those quotes just to let you know who is talking there, all right. Uh, God told my daughter uh, she was on the mission field way out there, all right? Nobody gave her money to do it. She had to spend her own money. And But God said, you go back to America and I will save him. This was a great step of faith. But she obeyed. She took him under her wing. And she brought him to the revival meetings being held by Rodney Howard Brown, all right? They went from one meeting to another meeting. They, she even took him over to Hawaii when uh, Rodney went over to Hawaii. God is faithful. He is a faithful God. And over a period of time, Doug opened his heart to Jesus. God delivered him from demons and after that called him into the ministry. He has been in the ministry for over 20 years now. What a faithful God we have. And I'm just going to give you one of his uh, testimonies after coming to God, uh, you know, I, I don't really remember. I just know that one of the first places that he was sent to was Gujarat in India. And later uh, he went back there after he was married, took his wife with him. But he used to like to listen to music and he would put the earphones on his ears and um, he, he would listen to Christian music and do his exercising by walking. And what he did was he went to the train tracks. All right, there, there was just one set of tracks. Sometimes it was the train was going that way and other times the train was coming this way. Um, but, you know, as he was walking on those train tracks, which they were kind of 
high up off the ground. Why he did that, I don't know, but he had these earphones on, he couldn't hear anything, and the, the express train was coming, and it was coming behind him, but because of those earphones, he couldn't hear. And, but inside of his spirit, he said he heard the words jump, that, that was all. And he never questioned, he never looked, he just jumped. It was, you know, and, and it was jumping down off of the tracks. And just as he jumped, that express train went by. Uh, there are other things that took place, but what a faithful God we have. Satan tries to, one way or another, hinder uh, people from serving the Lord, but God is always there to protect. May the Lord bless you. Never give up if you're praying for one of your children. Doesn't matter how long, 20 years, but today he's serving the Lord and walking with God. Oh, what a marvelous God.